be here. Uh, true ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today, I just want to share a testimony. Um, it's an experience that I had. It's very serious. Um, you have a lot of people that don't believe in the existence of hell or the place of hell. But I've had an experience myself where the Lord has showed me hell. And, you know, I always ask the Lord to show me things that will keep me humble, that will, you know, keep me in line pretty much. And a lot of times, you know, we've heard the saying before, um, be careful what you act for. Well, that's exactly the truth. That's 100% the truth because God will give it to you. Maybe not in your time, but in his time. Because his timing is always perfect. I just want to share this because many people need to know. And we as believers in Christ really need to know. You know, um, it's not uncommon if the world doesn't believe in hell. But we as believers must really believe in hell. I had an experience um, about two weeks ago. And it totally changed my life. And I'm going to go into detail. I did share some of this with the congregation. But I'm going to go ahead and just go into even the details that I didn't share with the congregation. Because now it's time. Now is the day to share this. Um, before I get started, I want to read a scripture. If you go over to Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 10, we're just going to read the first half because this is serious. This is very important. Jeremiah 48 and 10 says, Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Now, the reason why I brought that scripture up, not that I was doing any of the work of the Lord deceitfully, but it's very important the Lord had led me to share that. Um, with a lot of you out there that are viewing, some of you right now, you have a zeal of God. Some of you right now, you are preaching the word of God on, you know, uh, the media, um, Facebook websites or whatever, and you're, you're proclaiming the, the, the Lord. You have a love for the Lord. You have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And I don't say that to condemn you. I'm, I'm saying this is because when I get into this testimony, you'll see why I'm saying it. So one night it had to be about maybe one o'clock at night. I was on my way to bed and I was praying. I was meditating on the Lord. And I had this open vision. And when I say open vision, I just don't say vision. I say open vision because it happened right before my eyes, physically. Um, I didn't suffer any torment myself, but what I seen just by the eye alone, through the eyes alone, just to even see this place, um, it, it put a wearing even on my body. I was sore the next day. And this is real. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to, but it's true, and I know what God has showed me, and all I can do is speak what I see in truth. Amen. I'm not out here trying to make this stuff up. I'm not out here. I don't have time to play, but this is the truth, and I really feel that you should take heed that hell is real. The first thing that I saw when I was praying was I actually saw the place hell, the region hell, and there was a pit and there was a guy that was running screaming he just looked in utter torment he looked tormented just period you know in hell there is no break there's nothing but torment there is no rest there is no peace hell is hell and there's no way out of hell once you die and you're there so this man's torment not knowing what it was i saw uh, a centipede and it was black, but with this centipede, it had hundreds of not just legs on the bottom, but it had like claws and legs 
on its back. And what it was doing was it was chasing this individual around this pit. And it went inside through and just tormented this guy. And I'm telling you, just even see something like that is just tear alone. Hollywood could not even come up with a movie to describe to even show with the visual eye, just even show the visual eye was Hollywood couldn't even come up with. There was places in the hell where I seen people getting their heads ripped off, put back on, going through torment, utter terror. And the Bible says that in a moment there shall be utter terror. Um, there was rich people down there. There was people that was poor down there. There was people that went to church there was ministers pastors bishops so-called apostles so-called prophets there were many people in hell and just by bringing up these people that i seen that was in churches down there now i'm going to speak on why i use that scripture because everything that we do for the lord jesus christ we have to do it all to the glory of him none of ourselves none of deceit no way of trying to make it work our way to make it look good this is serious this is very serious hell is real it's a real place of torment and one day that place of torment is going to be cast into the lake of fire which is the second death there are people down there right now that if they had the chance to come back right now they wouldn't do what they did to get there. They would have took heed to the gospel. There were people that went to church. People listen to me. People went to church. That were ministers. Pastors. People that went to church. People that were ministers. Preaching the word of God. People that quoted. Matthew 4 and 4, men shall not live by bread alone, but live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. The Bible says, cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. It is a curse to go to hell. And it's, a, it's an unending curse once you're in hell. There are some of you ministers out there right now. I'm urging you. I'm warning you to repent right now. It's good that you're preaching the message. It's good that you're preaching the truth. Amen. But stop playing with God. Stop joking. This thing is not a joke. This thing is serious. You have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Why? And in me just even explaining hell, I've always believed in hell. I've always heard of hell in the word of God. But once you've actually seen hell. And you know what hell is like. You would take life a lot more serious. It's just like saying you've heard of a person. You've, you, you know of a person, but you really don't know that person. You've never had a conversation with that individual, but you say you know. Him. Oh, I know hell is real. Do you really know that hell is real? Do you really know that this place of torment is true? Because I tell you right now, one thing that God has spoke to me and he said, there are many ministers that profess my name with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. They're walking, their garments are spotted. They're walking around, they're preaching the word. They have a love for me, but they don't know me. Mm. That means you can preach about the rapture all day. You can preach about the end times all day. But what are you doing? Are you praying the way you're supposed to be praying? Are you fasting the way you're supposed to be fasting? Are you separating from who God told you to separate from? Are you doing these things that are righteous, that are true? Are you fellowshipping like you should? It says where there is a multitude of counselors. It says where there are counselors, there is a multitude of safety. I'm telling you, it, it doesn't have to be at a church building. But you got to get yourself with believers, true believers that are like-minded, that are on fire for God. Some people were in hell for being lazy. I don't feel like it today. And didn't even know that the next day that they wouldn't even be breathing on earth, they was in hell and torment. It 
it it grieves me even more when I know and I see in the spirit what's going on. When I even see a soul that is wounded here on earth that's being manipulated, that's being taken advantage of. This is why I blow the trumpet and I get persecuted by it. But if that person takes heed, the blood would not be on their own head. If they take heed, they can be delivered out of that when trouble hits the land. There are people right now that are going to churches that are being lied to, that are being um, persuaded that everything is all right. But deep down inside, your soul is tormented. You are being bamboozled. You are being hoodwinked. You are being lied to and deceived. God is not mocked. This place of hell is real. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen torments down there. People that committed fornication on earth went through their torment for that. If you really could see what was down there, you wouldn't even have the thought. You wouldn't even entertain the thought of fornication. That's why the Bible tells us to cast down every wicked imagination. Because in those thoughts as a man thinks, so is he. We have the power to speak life and death. And understand you can be preaching all you want to, man or woman of God. But if you are not fully lined up yourself, it comes to no effect. You yourself are a hypocrite. I know that even this video, I might get persecution, is not uncommon. Those that live godly will suffer persecution. But I tell you, and I stand here today and tell you that this is the truth. It's time to repent. It's time to get your house in order. It's time to stop saying that you're living right if you're not living right and you're doing this and you're still distracted. It ain't about how we feel, y'all. The truth is the truth. Hell is real. And us that do the work of the Lord, we are ordained to live the word of God. We have to do the word of God. We have to live it. We have to stand strong in the word of God. It's so sad because there are many people right now that are on their way to hell and they don't even know. They're on Facebook ministering, but at the same time. Inwardly, they have these secret lusts. They're not really trying to minister to, you know, um, the opposite sex. Really, what they want to do is they really have a motive behind it. You will be judged. The truth is the truth. There is no time to play. I can tell you, as I always say, time is at hand. The rapture could come back. But no, you could die in the next three seconds. You might not even live to see the rapture. This is so serious. This is the truth. I urge you all, please stay in your word. You don't want to suffer these torments. After I got out of this vision the next morning, my whole body was sore. And I told the congregation, I said, look, you're going to see a more serious side because the things that I saw, it's, it's, it's easy, see, it's easy to get on the pulpit. This is what I want you all to understand. It's easy to get up on the pulpit and know the truth, have the truth, preach the truth. And you believe the things that you preach. But I tell you, it's a whole different story when you're actually there, when you've actually seen it. And I thank God for his grace and his mercy. I thank God for everything that the Lord has done. I thank God for the Lord keeping me. I thank God for truth. I thank God for the word. But I tell you right now, hearken unto my voice. In the name of Jesus, you do not want to go to hell. The Bible says, let us not be Many masters, knowing that we shall suffer the greater condemnation. I'm a preacher. I'm preaching the word. Pastors, a warning that God has given me to give you is to stop candy coating the word. Those of you that are holding back, preach holiness. Preach fire brimstone. 
Preach the love of God. Preach the whole gospel. Because if you don't, God is holding you accountable and you will be a recipient of this place called hell. It's real. You don't want to go there. Ministers, let not your ministry be blamed. Everything that you say behind closed doors about your leaders, about whoever, brother, sister, or whatever, you are accountable. There were people in hell for that. Because all that came out of their mouth was guile. Their brother or their sister, they spoke on them without cause. The Lord said, I will put their fears upon them because when I called, they did not answer. Isaiah 66 and 4. Those of you right now, if you seeing something wrong going on in the ministry that you're at, go to your pastors. Let them know. Stop being fearful. Let them know. And why do they do these things? Because if the blind lead the blind, you will all fall into a ditch if you follow that. What is keeping you blind? There is a soul tie even in the churches where people are scared to leave the ministry because of whatever. Oh, well, this and that. And then all of a sudden you have a problem. What's going on? Leave because God is holding you accountable for that too. And when I warn people about these things, how serious this is, how people, and I've seen hell for myself. I've seen it. This is not a game. God showed me this, not to scare the living daylights out of me, but to tell the things that I have seen and I've recorded. The time is at hand. You make the choice. God is calling. Now is the time to.